Hello and uh, welcome. My name is Karen Chauvy. I'm the head of the International Program in Peace and Conflict Management at the University of Haifa. And I'm here to uh, tell you a little bit about our program, uh, what we do here, and what you might expect to uh, study if you uh, choose to apply for this program. I have a short presentation. And then um, I'll also invite uh, my colleague, Dr. Ryan Putner, who is um, also a faculty member in the program to talk about uh, a course that he will be teaching. And then one of our uh, students, Sophia Pukwala, to talk a little bit about the student experience. So this, as I've mentioned, we're the uh, International MA Program in Peace and Conflict Management, operating under the Faculty of Social Sciences at the University of Haifa. Um, looking at our history, we were the first international program to operate at the uh, university and to be taught entirely in English. Um, so the 2020-2021 cohort will actually be our 10th year uh, of operating in the program. Um, the program is interdisciplinary, which means that we're not uh, grounded in one specific academic discipline. Uh, our view is that um, complex phenomena, phenomena like conflict and peacemaking um, require the perspective of a variety of disciplines. And for that reason, we operate under the faculty of social sciences and don't belong to any of the departments or schools that um, comprise this uh, faculty. Um, very generally, describing what we teach about in our program, um, we um, present many diverse approaches to the topic of peace and conflict. What does it mean that we're diverse? Well, first, it's important to understand that when we're talking about conflict, our main focus is on intergroup conflict, meaning um, groups of people are involved. Um, you will not hear so much from us about uh, conflict uh, in families or conflict in uh, the courts between a um, single plaintiff and a single uh, defendant. We're looking at conflicts that involve groups, at least on two sides, sometimes um, even more of them. But even if we um, focus just on these intergroup conflicts, there are still several levels in which we can consider these um, at the local level, we can look at conflicts in uh, diverse communities where um, individual people with uh, different identities, ethnicities, um, religions, cultures, beliefs, um, live, to, live together in close proximity. Those differences in identities, beliefs, cultures, and so on can sometimes or many times be a uh, cause for uh, tensions and conflicts, but of course there are many ways in which um, one can intervene to reduce these conflicts and actually uh, facilitate cooperation. At a um, uh, wider social level, we can look at conflicts within states. Many states have uh, one dominant ma uh, majority group that um, controls most of the uh, state's institutions, but also many minority groups that um, seek to have their unique identities um, expressed and their uh, rights acknowledged. Um, and again, this is something that can lead to many uh, tensions and conflicts within states, but also um, uh, is a place where uh, one can intervene to actually reduce conflict and in, uh, increase uh, cooperation. And then finally, at the broadest level, we can consider international conflicts, which are conflicts uh, that wage between states uh, at the most uh, extreme level can uh, become uh, wars and violent conflicts. Other times they're uh, handled by uh, other means, like diplomatic means, and all of these things are um, topics that we consider as we consider um, issues of peace and conflict in our program. In the same way that we have a uh, diversity of uh, the uh, types and levels of conflicts that we considered, we also have a diversity and um, different levels at which we consider uh, processes of conflict management and peace, peacemaking. Um, scholars in this field often um, 
describe these uh, different approaches to conflict management and peacemaking as a pyramid. So at the top of the pyramid, we have the so-called TAC-1 or uh, official approaches. These are approaches that mainly engage the top level leaders that have the uh, power to uh, make decisions and make uh, policy on behalf of states or on behalf of a very large uh, collective of people. Um, traditional approaches to uh, diplomacy, for example, work at this level, at the uh, TAC-1 level. Um, at the mid-level of the pyramid, we consider uh, track two approaches, which are approaches that engage not just the top-level leaders with uh, decision-making power, but also the um, societal leaders or the elites. So these, these are um, individuals with social influence, with standing in society and ability to influence many other people in society and to recruit them to the uh, peacemaking pr uh, process is the uh, track two approach uh, instead or in parallel to the track one approach we uh, again recruit large number of society members to actually be involved in the process and to consider it relevant to them and related to that at the broadest uh, level at the, or the foundation level of the pyramid, we have the grassroots approaches that uh, are the approaches to peacemaking that engage ordinary citizens in the project. And these approaches are based on the understanding that when we're talking about uh, peacemaking, often we're not just talking about signing agreements that will then be implemented by the top level leaders. These are uh, processes that will have an effect on the everyday life of ordinary citizens living in close proximity to other people that they very recently consider to be their enemies. So what does this mean for, uh, for the uh, process of peacemaking and how do you engage, engage people in the process? All of this um, refers to the grassroots level level. In the program, we will address all of these different approaches to uh, give students a comprehensive view of various uh, ways in which one can um, approach uh, peacemaking. Um, looking now at the curriculum about specifically what you might expect to study, we have two tracks in the program, two tracks that can lead to a master's degree in peace and conflict management. Uh, track A is the thesis track. In this um, and track B is the uh, non-thesis track. In both of these tracks, the students uh, take part in three core courses and complete the practicum, which is a um, skills internship that I will talk about more elaborately in a little bit. In the thesis track, students also complete um, three elective courses and a research thesis. A research thesis must involve original research and it is conducted under the supervision of a specific uh, faculty member uh, assigned to be an advisor and it's evaluated by the advisor and also by an additional external evaluator. In the uh, non-thesis track, in addition to the four courses in the practicum, students uh, complete five elective courses and write a graduation project. A graduation project differs from a thesis um, in that it doesn't require uh, innovative research. It's basically uh, writing up and integrating the, uh, what students uh, have studied in uh, the other courses. Often students write this about their practicum, but it can also be uh, um, an elaborate summary paper uh, written as part of um, a different course. It, unlike the thesis, it does not require, as I mentioned, original research, and there's no external evaluation. Because of this, a graduation project usually requires uh, somewhat uh, less effort and takes less time than a research thesis. And so uh, the uh, two additional elective courses are, uh, make the two uh, tracks more or less equivalent to each other. So as I mentioned, a very, very important component of our curriculum is the practicum, which is an internship that students complete at organizations that work in the domain of peace and conflict management defined very, very broadly. Um, to give a very general idea of the types of organizations in which uh, students may be involved as part, as part of the internship, there are some organizations that are working to try and promote Middle East 
peace, mainly between um, Israel and its neighbors. Uh, quite a few organizations working on um, improving uh, Jewish-Arab relations within Israel using a variety of approaches. Um, several organizations working on uh, human rights and human rights advocacy in Israel and more globally. Under that, some uh, organizations focus specifically on minority rights within Israel. Um, several organizations working with refugees, asylum seekers, and work migrants in, um, in Israel. And also some organizations working in the domain of um, promoting social justice and citizen, uh, citizen empowerment. Again, this has relevance uh, often to uh, various uh, marginalized groups. Um, the uh, practicum takes place in the spring semester and in the fall semester we um, do a process of finding uh, which organizations are uh, willing to offer an internship to our students and what uh, exactly is available and then we uh, do a process of matching students to organizations and placing students at organizations so that by the time the uh, spring semester begins they're ready to start their internship. The internship is done in parallel to studying. So usually students devote about one day per week to engaging in the internship and on other days um, continue to uh, take part in the uh, courses in studying. We do have academic supervision of the internship in addition to supervision at the organization. So students are required to complete some course requirements which so in addition to the courses and the internship, uh, one other element that we have in the program that uh, students often enjoy are the extracurricular activities. So uh, we try to arrange several field trips to, um, for the students to various regions in Israel where people are uh, dealing with issues of conflict. Uh, as one illustration, the photo shown here is from a visit uh, that uh, some of our students had a few years ago to the um, UN base on the Israel-Syria uh, border. Um, another kind of uh, extracurricular activity is guest lectures by uh, various um, experts in the field that are both academic and practitioners that have experience in the field. One example, um, this year we had a visit from a graduate of a program who is now the manager of the um, Haifa Center for Dialogue and Conflict Resolution, which is the um, municipal uh, mediation center of the city. Um, simulation workshops are all sorts of uh, uh, workshops done as part of some of the courses that uh, simulate negotiation processes, problem solving processes, um, diplomatic processes, and uh, so on. And then lastly, we have conferences on relevant topics, most recently, uh, we um, hosted an international conference on co-constructing fair society between Jewish and Arab communities in Israel. Um, who, are, who are the students? What you can see here is a list of all the countries from which we had students um, attend the program over the uh, 10 years in which we've been operating. Of course, we don't have students from each and every one of these countries every year, but we do have a great diversity of students. You can see that over the years we've pretty much covered the globe in terms of the locations that our uh, students came from. There's a great diversity of countries and origins uh, um, represented in the program and one of the fun things about it is that in terms of the composition of, student, of students it's very very different every year but it's always very in very interesting. Um, lastly, one thing that potential applicants want to know about are some of the potential career tra trajectories for uh, graduates of the program. So here are some examples. This is certainly a non-exhaustive list, but to give you some ideas, um, some of our graduates have found themselves in international peace organizations like, uh, like the UN and its various missions. Some have found themselves in uh, organizations um, involved in human rights advocacy at the international level, for example, an example is Amnesty International, but there are also many um, local human rights advocacy groups in different countries. 
You have been involved in aid organization, for example, the Peace Corps for Americans. Um, students have found themselves in various uh, roles and positions um, dealing with diversity and social exclusion in a global world. Uh, for example, positions related to migration and integration in various uh, countries that are dealing with an influx of uh, immigrants and also a consultant and issue of uh, cross-cultural competence in um, various multicultural societies. Um, some students are involved in private consultancy as conflict specialists, for example, negotiation experts or uh, mediators. Graduates can be um, organizations and community consultants involved in various processes that require coordination and cooperation of various um, stakeholders for better functioning of organizations or communities. And also um, deliberative democracy consultants um, assisting uh, policymakers in uh, engaging in deliberate processes that seek to involve the public in the decision makers. So when policy is made, it's not uh, seen as um, adversarial to uh, the ordinary citizens, but actually something that, that involves them and that we can cooperate with them. Um, this is a very brief overview of what you might expect in this uh, program. If you, oh, also I forgot to mention, some of our uh, graduates have also become social change agents themselves or activists seeking to um, promote change, move the societies they're living into uh, better places. Um, so this is it uh, from me. If you need additional information, I can recommend, first of all, visiting our program's website. Unfortunately, it's currently not entirely mobile compatible, so it's recommended that you access it from a computer. We're working on making it mobile compatible. If you have any questions about academic matters, like the um, criteria for admission, prerequisite requirements, uh, choices of courses, and so on, you're very welcome to write to me at this address. If you have any questions about administrative issues, for example, which documents are required for uh, application, how to submit an application and so on, you're also welcome to um, write to our administrative coordinator, Ms. Bella Botnik, at the address that is also shown here. So this is it for me. Thank you very, very much for uh, your attention. Um, and at this point, I'd like to invite Dr. Ron Kutner, uh, my colleague and another faculty member in our program, to talk to us a little bit or to talk to you about um, the course that he is teaching on consensus building. Ron, please. Yeah, thank you very much, Karen. And hello, everyone. Thank you for taking the time to uh, listen to our overview of the program. Um, I would like to speak particularly about a certain course that is taught early on in the program. As uh, Karen mentioned, we focus on intergroup conflicts. However, in order for us to be able to engage in intergroup conflicts and to facilitate intergroup conflicts, there is a need for us to undergo a process of learning basic skills of negotiation, of mediation, and then move to group facilitation, which deals more with the complexities of intergroup processes. Therefore, this particular course called Building Consensus is about how to help you build consensus, first and foremost, as negotiators, reflecting on your own personal experiences, thinking about your own challenges when negotiating with others on everyday matters in your families, in your communities, in your workplaces, this is an important reflective journey of learning to see the challenges and acquiring the skills that eventually will help you become better negotiators and then taking these negotiation skills to the next level, which is serving as a third party neutral who, helps other, who help others do that. First as mediators, again, we go there gradually. Mediators work with two people, maybe three people, but this is on a lower scale and that again helps you de develop your skills, which later you can use as part of your toolbox as conflict specialists. We're here to give you a variety of tools, skills, knowledge, 
that will help you come out of this program as conflict specialists who are grounded also in the practice and are able to serve as practitioners as well. I can speak for myself that I combine my academic and theoretical work with academic advisory to NGOs and organizations and community mediation centers, also mediating myself as a private mediator, helping with the work on the ground and mediating between theory and practice. So what your added value coming out of this program will be is that you'll be able to combine practices but intelligibly making informed choices with regard to the with regard to the practice with theoretical uh, background that you will acquire in the program. So as I mentioned from mediation we move to group facilitation and there you learn how to work with large group of stakeholders, how to work on a community level or policy making consensus building as Ken mentioned before or other large scale processes in which you can serve then as a third party neutral who help facilitate and integrate the work of many organizations. As we move more into a deliberative understanding of democracy and try to help large groups work in complex situations and stakeholders to work together and government facilitating and convening many stakeholders to work together. These are essential skills to help deal with today's uh, complex problems. Therefore, this particular course is grounded in the practice and will help you develop the skills that will then later be combined with other theoretical courses. So that is what I wanted to share with you. Maybe one last uh, couple of things that I would like to say is that as you will be joining us at the program situated in Israel, many of the cases that we will bring forth will have to do with the situation here in our region, in our area, dealing with the history and the presence of the, and the complexities of the Jewish, Arab, Israeli, Palestinian, Israeli and Arab world around us but we will not neglect also other cases throughout the world, for example, dealing with Northern Ireland and lessons learned from there, or South African Truth and Reconciliation Committees and other conflicts from around the world that will be part of uh, what you will be exposed uh, in our program. We will help you develop the skills and the ability to perceive the work of the conflict specialists as leaders, meaning how to help you cultivate the skills to serve as uh, change agents yourselves that will lead change wherever you would like to take them afterwards, but also how to work with leaders and how to help them do the work in a more collaborative manner and how to engage, as I mentioned, the comp complex problems with more of an integrative approach to help move social problems forward in a constructive manner. So. We hope to see you with us and we wish you best of luck in any decision that you will take. Karen. Okay, Th thank you very, very much, Brian. So uh, now I would like to introduce one of our students in the uh, program, Sophia Bicola. Sophia, if you would uh, like to please introduce yourself, tell us where you're from, what brought you to this program and what has been your experience. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. And thank you, Ran and Karen, for having me today. Um, as Karen just mentioned, uh, my name is Sofia and I'm from, from Italy. I'm a student of the University of Haifa of the program in Peace and Conflict uh, Management. And um, since uh, the professors uh, focus on more on the academic aspects of the program, I would like to um, give you um, some aspects that I really that I personally I personally really liked. So I would like to give you a more um, personal um, experience. And so um, I could say many things. And um, what I would like to start with is the student body. So uh, what Karen said is that it's very uh, diverse and uh, um, at the program we have different, um, so many 
people uh, coming from different countries in the world. And I really like this because I was not used to it in my um, um, academic path before. And I have to say that having the chance to uh, exchange idea, projects and perspectives, uh, not only with international students, but also with local students that can offer you their, their vision of the situation, their ideas, I think is really fruitful for, um, for our understanding of the situation and of the field. And also during uh, these uh, times where we have online classes, uh, I have to say that the conversation, uh, all the conversations we have in class are really interesting and uh, everybody is really open to new ideas and new perspectives. So this is something I would like to emphasize first. Then I would like to mention the, the fact that the program is in Israel and in Haifa, um, because I think like going to the places that, so you do not only study the theory, like you do not only read the papers and have the lectures of the professors, but you have the chance to go and visit some places that are so important for, uh, for the field we study in. And having the chance to talk to, to locals and, you know, having a more direct experience uh, to, with them, I think it's very, it's what really differentiates this program from um, other programs I would, um, that are similar, which offer the same, you know, like a similar uh, academic path. And another thing that I really like is the chance to um, do the internship during the program. Uh, also, if I'm not in Israel right now, as, as I mentioned, uh, I'm still doing my internship with an organization based in Jerusalem and they work for, uh, they advocate for human rights, um, basically. So um, I do have a better understanding of what is going on in the field right now. And it is really helpful for my future as well. Um, living in Haifa is a very uh, enjoyable experience. You do have all the things that um, a student needs, for example, the library and all the facilities, but also the fact that uh, the city is, um, is very lively and there is the, the sea and beautiful landscapes all over. You have uh, all the facilities and activities that, um, uh, that are needed to, to have you know, like a perfect both academic and personal experience. And um, yes, I would recommend to visit the website. If you have any other uh, question, uh, please feel free to contact the professors and the staff. I'm sure they will be really helpful. And thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very, very much, Sophia, for sharing your experiences with us. And thanks to everyone for tuning in. As I mentioned before, you're welcome to contact us at all the um, channels that I've mentioned previously if you have any additional questions. And I hope to see at least some of you among our applicants in the future. Thank you very much.